Detective James Anderson stopped the man who was leaving a clothing store. The sales assistant claims you've stolen some expensive gloves. These are my gloves. I've had them for ages. But the detective immediately understood the man was lying. How? The man wouldn't be able to use these gloves. They are both for the same hand. A phone call woke Detective Anderson early in the morning. My house has been burgled, Mr. Harrison shouted. When James arrived at the man's house, he heard the following story. While I was away on business, my neighbor Adam was looking after my house. That's when Adam decided to chip in. I heard some noise coming from Mr. Harrison's house yesterday. I came up to the window to check if everything was okay. It was very cold, and the window was completely frozen. I breathed on the glass to unfreeze it a bit and saw that everything inside was in a mess. I immediately called Mr. Harrison. And now, Detective Anderson said, tell us where the stuff you stole from your neighbor is. How did James understand Adam was guilty? Windows freeze from the inside, not outside. A rich man's wife disappeared from the hotel where she was staying. Detective Anderson had to inform and question her husband. He found the man on his own island. I've been here for the last two months. I asked my family and staff not to come and distract me. I'm writing a book. And over the past several weeks, I've been working from early morning to late evening. I haven't even left this cabin. Anderson immediately understood the man was lying. Ow. There's only a thick notebook and a pen on the man's desk. If he had been writing as much as he claimed, the ink would have finished long ago. Mr. Dillon sold beautiful rare vases. There were dozens of them on the shelves of his store. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, the owner had his head bandaged. His store was a mess. These guys ran into my store and grabbed the money and the most expensive vases. Then they hit me on the head and I blacked out. Detective Anderson immediately understood that Mr. Dillon was lying to get the insurance money. How did they figure it out? Even though most of the vases are on the floor, they aren't even cracked. But if the vases had fallen down from the shelves during the robbery, they would have been shattered. Janet called the police. I was crossing the road when a car almost ran me down. I fell down and hit my head. When the police officers arrived at the place of the accident, Janet showed them the car that, as she thought, had almost hit her. The driver arrived at that moment. He denied doing it. Detective Anderson asked Janet to calm down. It really wasn't the car they needed to look for. How did he understand it? It was raining when Janet was crossing the road, but there's a dry spot under the man's car. It means it had been standing there for a long time and couldn't have hit Janet. Look at these two bloggers. As you can see, they both seem to be very popular. They also have the same amount of likes. But there's something wrong with one of them. She must be hiding something. What is it? The girl on the right is probably trying to save money at the moment. The logo on her bag looks like the Chanel logo, but it's written Gucci underneath. Detective Anderson was on a train. He had very nice fellow travelers. They were talking and laughing when the train entered a tunnel. Everything was plunged into darkness for several minutes. When the train left the tunnel, one of the passengers, Ella, exclaimed, My diamond brooch! It's gone! Everyone started talking nervously, looking at one another. That's when Anderson calmly said, I know who took the brooch. I saw it. How could he see it? One of the travelers had a watch with luminous hands. And when this guy moved his hand to take the brooch, James noticed it. It was a scorching hot day when Larry made a bet with his friends. 
The guy told them that water produced by different companies tastes different too. At that time, they were chilling in the garden of one of Larry's friends, drinking water and lemonade. You can blindfold me. I'll take a sip from two bottles of water, the one we have on the table and the one you'll bring from the kitchen. I noticed it was another producer. I bet I'll be able to tell the difference. Then he did exactly that. His friends were ready to give Larry the money he had won, but Detective Anderson, yep, he was there too, cut in. You were cheating, he said. Why did he think so? It was an extremely hot day. No wonder the water that had been outside for several hours was much warmer than the water brought from the kitchen. Rachel called the police early in the morning. When they arrived, she told the officers her story. I work in a museum. Yesterday, I took home several ancient books. I wanted to do some research. But then a blackout happened. I lit a couple of candles and continued my work. Suddenly, I heard the doorbell ring. When I opened the door, someone in a black mask hit me on the head. When I came to my senses, the books were gone. Detective Anderson arrested the woman for misreporting. Why? If there had been a blackout, the doorbell wouldn't have been working. Detective Anderson was walking along the river when he heard someone screaming. It was a young woman. She was drowning. James immediately left his shoes and backpack on the ground and dove into the water. Luckily, he was in time. When James was pulling the woman out of the river, he saw a passerby standing next to his stuff. "Uh, Unfortunately, I can't swim, but I looked after your things, the man said. Then why did you rummage in my backpack? James asked. How did he understand someone had opened his backpack? When he dropped the bag on the ground, the zipper was on the left side, but now it's on the right. Detective Anderson found out a smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. He arrived there and detained three suspects. Look at them and try to figure out who the smuggler is. It's the third passenger. His suitcase is full of totally random stuff. Women's shoes, some rugs, old dirty jeans, a wig. Plus, when closed, the suitcase looks much larger than when it's open. Una found her cousin, Mia, poisoned in her room and called the police. Detective Callum asked Luna what had happened. She said that she was walking past Mia's house when she saw that the light in her room was on. She walked to the window to see if Mia was there and saw her on the floor. She had a key, so she walked into the house and called the police. She didn't touch anything so that they could investigate what had happened. Detective Callum arrested Luna. Why? She said that she saw Mia in the window. But look, the blinds are closed. If Luna hadn't touched anything, she couldn't have seen what was going on in the room. She must be lying about something. While Ms. Virginia Dell, a rich lady, was on her three-month business trip abroad, her mansion was robbed. The security was notified, and Detective Callum started the investigation. There were three people caught on the security camera, and he started interrogating them. Charlotte, Ms. Dell's cousin said that she'd visited several times to collect the mail. Camilla, the housemaid, said that she had come three days ago to clean the house. Ismail, the gardener, said that she came every Wednesday to take care of the garden. All of them denied stealing anything. Detective Callum arrested one of them. Whom? Camilla, the housemaid. She said that she had cleaned the house three days ago. But look at the house. There's dust and dark stains. It doesn't look like the house has been cleaned recently. So she probably lied. Abigail stayed late in the office because she had a lot of work to do. She left the room to get some snacks and a coffee. 
Half an hour later, she returned and found out that someone had stolen her wallet. So she called the police. Detective Callum interrogated three people who were still in the office. Noel, the cleaning man, said that he had been cleaning another floor and had never stepped into Abigail's office that day yet. Sonia, the accountant, said that she had been talking on the phone with her mom. Sean, a regional manager, said that he had been in his office flooded with work. Who stole the wallet? No one. Detective Callum figured out that since Abigail went to get snacks and coffee, she must have had her wallet with her. He just recommended she should get some sleep and stop overworking. Elizabeth and her daughter Ella went abroad traveling. They were walking and shopping in one remote town when Elizabeth noticed that Ella had disappeared. She called the police and they started to look for the girl. There were three people nearby and they were interrogated. Layla said that she hadn't seen the girl. Madison said that she had seen the girl with her mom, but that was it. Amelia said that she had heard someone screaming, but she hadn't seen who it was. Who should be arrested? Layla, look, she's carrying Ella's purse. Gideon had a girlfriend, a sister, and two cousins. Figure out who Gideon's sister is if the cousins are saying the truth and the sister and the girlfriend are lying. Chloe. E is his girlfriend. Ruby. Chloe is lying. Skylar. Ruby is lying. Lily. Skylar is not his sister. If Chloe is telling the truth, then Lily is lying. Then, Skylar is his sister, who's also lying. So, Ruby must be telling the truth, which contradicts that Chloe is telling the truth. So, Chloe is for sure lying. Then, Ruby is telling the truth, and Skylar is lying. So, Lily is telling the truth. Two liars are Chloe and Skylar, and they're Gideon's girlfriend and sister. Lily says that Skylar isn't his sister. So Skylar is his girlfriend, and then Chloe is his sister. Scarlett just moved into her new apartment three days ago. One evening, she was reading before bed when she heard a knock on the door. She opened the door, and there was a confused man who said, Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I just moved in here earlier today, and I thought it was my apartment. Oh, oh once again, sorry, and, and good night. Then he left. Scarlett didn't believe that it was just a mistake and reported the man to the police. Why? The problem was that the guy had knocked. If he had really thought it was his room, he would have tried to open it with his own keys. Nora lived alone in the city suburbs. She called the police and reported that someone had robbed her house and stolen her savings that she had been keeping in a pair of socks on one of her wardrobe shelves. Detective Callum arrived with the police, took a look at the room, and closed the case, claiming that the lady was lying. Why did he think so? The room was absolutely clean. If someone had robbed the house, they would have made a mess while searching for money. The person who took the money must have known exactly where it was, which is unrealistic. Mrs. Ledger is a high school history teacher. One day, she started a sudden oral test, asking students questions from the back of the book. If the students figure out the order in which she asks, they can find the answer to their question in advance. The first three people she asked were Atlas, Eleanor, and Gracelyn. There are Zoe, Luca, Sienna, and Victoria left. Can you guess who will answer which question? (laughs) 
Mrs. Ledger is asking students in alphabetical order. So, up next is Luca, then Sienna, then Victoria, and Zoe. Another day, another test. Once again, Mrs. Ledger is asking students. This time, the first ones to answer were Zoe, Luca, and Atlas. In which order will she ask the remaining students? This time, she started with people with the shortest names. There are three letters in Zoe, four in Luca, and five in Atlas. The next one is Sienna, who has six letters in her name, then Eleanor with seven letters, Victoria with eight letters, and Gracelyn with nine. Erica works at the Railway Security Service. This morning, she received an emergency alert. There's a person with fake documents trying to escape to Canada by train. Erica and her colleagues found three suspects who look almost the same. Can you identify a criminal just by looking at one's passport? No matter what country a person is from, no passport can have a photo with mountains in the background. So this documents are fake. Bob is a college teacher. He invited his worst student, Dan, for a conversation. Bob wants to test the guy's logical thinking. He says, If you tell a lie, I will expel you from college. And if you tell the truth, I'll still expel you. What should the student say to stay in college? Bob should say, I'm telling lies. This phrase will create a paradox because it cannot be a lie or the truth. Nancy has 10 bowling balls. Her brother Josh decided to check her intelligence. So, he asked Nancy to place those 10 balls in 5 lines, such that each of the lines has exactly 4 balls on them. Can you help her accomplish this task? She should draw a 5-point star and place the 10 balls occupying the corners and the intersection points. Voila! 5 lines with 4 balls in each row. Kevin has been hitchhiking in a desert for hours. Finally, one driver stopped and said, I will give you a ride wherever you want, but first, you gotta crack my riddle. Which letter can make the road larger? Can you help Kevin solve this task? The letter B can turn road into broad. Alex is a shepherd. He had 30 sheep, out of which all but 13 ran away. Can you calculate how many sheep Alex has now? He has 13 sheep. The phrase all but 13 ran away actually means that all except the 13 escaped. Take a look at these three prisoners. The first guy pushes the iron bars. The second guy shakes muscles with dumbbells. The third guy sits and reads a book. There's a picture hanging on the wall. Can you say for sure who's likely to escape? Take a closer look at the third guy. Can you see the sand under the painting? He must be digging a tunnel and covering it with a picture. So he's the one who wants to escape. All Becky's shoes are black, except two. Also, all Becky's shoes are red, except two. And all Becky's shoes are yellow, except two. Can you calculate how many shoes Becky has in general? Just three, one of each color. Dr. Smith prescribed Dan expensive vitamins. He gave Dan two bottles labeled R and B. The pills are entirely identical. The doctor asked Dan to take one pill daily from the R bottle and one pill from the B bottle. He can't take more or less than that. One morning, Dan was taking out the pills. 
He took out one pill from the R bottle as usual, and then, by mistake, he took out two from the B bottle. Now Dan has no idea which pill is which. He can't just throw away the expensive pills. What would you suggest? Dan should cut each of the three pills in half and put each half in two piles. Now each of the two piles will contain half of pill R and two halves of pill B. Now, Dan should take one more pill from the R bottle, cut it into half, and put the two halves in two different piles. This way, we'll know that each pile will have two halves of pill R and two halves of pill B, or one complete R pill and one complete B pill. Dan can take one pile today and keep the second pile for tomorrow. I am red, but I smell like blue paint. What am I? Red paint Timmy's mother has three sons. She named her first son April. The next one's name is May. Can you guess the youngest son's name? And the correct answer is... Timmy. Pretty obvious, huh? Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? The reflection in the mirrors doesn't match reality. What about this picture? Can you see anything odd? These two ladies seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on this guy's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had big scratches, unless they're a zombie. The king of octopuses has sons who have six, seven, or eight legs. The one with seven legs always lies, but the one with either six or eight legs always tells the truth. On a certain night, four sons meet and chat. The blue octopus says, we have 28 legs altogether. The green one says, we have 27 legs altogether. The purple one says, we have 26 legs altogether. And the red octopus says, we have 25 legs altogether. Can you identify the color of the sun who's speaking the truth? The green sun is telling the truth. To prove it, let us first assume that one of them is telling the truth. Obviously, three of the four suns lie as they disagree with each other. Let's suppose that the blue octopus is telling the truth. In that case, he has either six or eight legs. And each of the other octopuses is lying, which means they have seven legs. In this case, the total number of legs will be six plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 27 legs, or eight plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 29 legs. But the blue octopus said that they have 28 legs altogether. Therefore, he lies. Now we can follow the same logic and check the remaining three suns and we'll find out that only the green octopus is telling the truth. I have an eye, but cannot see. I'm faster than any man alive, but have no limbs. What am I? The correct answer is hurricane. I know a word of letters three. Add two and there will be fewer. Can you guess the word? The correct answer is few. I have a beard without being a man. I'm green, but I'm not a lizard. I'm white, but I'm not snow. Who am I? The correct answer is leek. Amelia, Belle, Chloe, and Della are identical quadruplets who always prank people. One day, one of the girls' teachers had to let Amelia leave the class early. She had a doctor's appointment. 
but the woman wasn't sure which girl was Amelia. The quadruplets had decided to help her. Here is what they said. Amelia is one of the girls standing in the middle. No, Amelia is one of the girls standing on the sides. I'm Amelia. I'm not Amelia. Three girls lied and one told the truth. Who is Amelia? If Amelia is the first girl, then two girls told the truth, the second and the fourth ones. If Amelia is the second girl, then the first and the fourth girls told the truth. If Amelia is the third girl, then the first and the third ones told the truth. But if Amelia is the fourth girl, then only the second girl told the truth. So, Amelia must be the fourth girl. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She found a witch's house, petted her black cat, and asked the witch to send her home. The witch wanted to play a game. If Esme won, she'd send her home. But if Esme lost, she'd have to stay with the witch forever. We'll be saying numbers between 1 and 10. The next player will have to choose a number that's between 1 to 10 greater than the previous one. The first person to say 50 wins. You can start. How can Esme win? If she wants to say 50, she needs the witch to say a number between 40 and 49. So, before 50, she has to say 39. If she wants to say 39, the witch has to say a number between 29 and 38. So, Esme has to say 28, and before that, 17, and before that, 6. So, Esme must start with 6, and then say 17, 28, 39, and 50. Cassidy woke up in a dungeon and couldn't remember what happened to her. She needed to get out, but the door was locked and required a password. Can you guess what the password is? Every next number is made by moving the last digit of the previous four to the front. So, the password must be... Four, seven, two, eight. Mrs. Davies is an elderly lady telling a story of her life. After I lived one-fourth of my life, I got my first car. I married one-twelfth of my life later. One-sixth of my life later, I started a business. One-fourth of my life later, I got my first granddaughter. She just turned 18. How old is Mrs. Davies? Let's say Mrs. Davies is X years old. One-fourth of her life, till she gets her first car, X is 4. Then we add 12 till her marriage, X till opening her business, 4 till the birth of her granddaughter, and finally, 18 years from then till now. It should all be equal to x. If you solve this equation, you'll figure out that x is equal to 72. So, Mrs. Davies must be 72 years old. Esme was walking in the forest, and you know what? She didn't get lost this time. She knew how to get home, but the other road led to the witch's house, and the girl recently came up with a cool riddle for the witch. So, Esme decided to pay her a visit. She offered a deal. If the witch couldn't solve her riddle, Esme would get her cat. The witch agreed, and Esme gave her a square piece of paper, 4 inches by 4 inches, with a total area of 16 square inches. Turn it into a square with a total area of 8 square inches without a ruler. How can the witch do it? The witch should fold the four corners of the square towards the middle. This way, she'll get a square that is exactly twice as small as the original one. Apparently, the witch gets to keep her cat this time. There's a box filled with balls of different colors. Five red ones, eight blue ones, and eleven purple ones. Allison has a tricky task. 
Blindfolded, she has to keep picking up balls until she's sure that she has balls of at least two different colors. What's the minimum number of balls she should pull out of the box? In the worst case scenario, Allison will be picking up balls of the same color until there are no more of them left in the box. The majority of balls are purple, so if she picks up a purple ball every single time, it'll be 11 balls. And only after that will she get a ball of a different color. So, she should pick up 12 balls. There was a car accident in the suburbs, and police arrived to investigate the case. The driver went into a cliff right where the road was taking a dangerous turn. The car turned around, and he was pushed out of it and got stuck nearby. He had his cell phone on him, so he was able to make a call. A police officer helped the driver out and asked him to show what was in the trunk. The driver gladly opened it with his keys. In the trunk, there was his suitcase, some instruments, and a spare tire. The police officer said that the accident had been staged. Why? The driver took the keys out of his pocket. If it had been a real accident, the keys would have remained in the car. Mr. Grayson called the police and said that she had been robbed. Detective Callum arrived for the investigation. Here's what she said. It was almost midnight. I was in my room upstairs painting. Suddenly, the power went out. There was no light or electricity, and I could only see the streetlights outside. Then, the stationary phone rang. I was scared, so I didn't pick it up. I stayed upstairs, and in about 10 minutes, the light came back. I just went to sleep, and now, in the morning, I found out that someone stole my grandma's diamond ring. Detective Callum didn't believe her. Why? If the lights and the electricity were out, how would a stationary telephone ring? This lady is making things up. Gavin drove to get some groceries and parked his car in front of the store. Of course, he forgot where he had parked and couldn't find his car. Luckily, he had taken a picture of his parked car and he opened it to look up the number of the parking lot. The problem is that his parking lot number is covered and the number of the lots nearby doesn't make any sense. Can you figure out what's Gavin's parking lot number and where he should search for his car? The numbers are just turned upside down in the photo. The numbers are 86 through 91, and his car is parked in 87. Now I have a short logo quiz for you. I'll show you a logo, and you have to tell the company. Here's the first one. Do you recognize it? It's Honda, a Japanese car brand. This one is super easy. What is it? This is Pepsi, of course. What about this cute crocodile? Does it ring a bell? This is Lacoste, a French clothing brand. Another easy one. I bet you have it on your phone. Yes, of course. That's Spotify. What about this one? Yes, it's Nike. This one is a very fancy brand. What's your guess? That's Louis Vuitton. Okay, another one for you. It's harder, but you've got this. What's your call? This is Reebok, an American footwear company. Do you recognize this bull? Is a Lamborghini logo. This is a painfully familiar yellow rectangle. Where is it from? That's the National Geographic logo. 
Portia and Vinette live in a country where postal services are super unreliable. Everything sent by post is stolen from the package. How can Portia send his wife, Vinette, a diamond ring if both of them can buy locks, but don't have keys from each other's locks? Portia can lock the box with the ring and send it to Vinette. When she receives the box, she should lock the box with her lock and send it back to him. When he receives it, he can open his lock and remove it and send the box back to Vinette with her lock only so that she can open it once she gets it again. There is a box filled with balls of different colors. Five red ones, eight blue ones, and eleven purple ones. Ninja has to pick out balls blindfolded until he's sure that he has at least two balls of the same color. What's the minimum number of balls Ninja should take out to be sure of that? Worst case scenario, he'll be picking out the balls of a different color every time. There are three colors, so if he picks out three, they might all be different. But if he picks out four, then the additional one for sure will match one of the existing colors. So, Ninja should pick four. Like every morning, Daphne went to her favorite local cafe to get her coffee and breakfast sandwich. She left the cafe after she'd paid. A few minutes later, she returned, looking anxious because she had forgotten her wallet. Strangely, it was nowhere to be found. She called the police to report the incident. Nobody had left the store, so the thief was still there when the officer arrived. He started questioning everyone. Jenny, the cashier, said that Daphne was a regular customer and she had known her for a long time. So, she would never steal her wallet and she didn't see it after Daphne had paid. Andre was a tourist visiting the city for the first time. He said he'd come to the cafe because he'd wanted to try their famous muffins. She claimed he hadn't seen the wallet. He was busy trying to pick what type of muffin he should get at the time. And Harry worked as a store clerk. He said that he'd come there to grab a coffee. And he didn't see the wallet because he was pouring milk into his coffee. So who do you think stole the wallet? It was Harry, the store clerk, or should I say Harold. Do you see his name tag? He lied about his name when he ordered his drink. Also, even though he said he was pouring milk in his coffee, as you can see, it doesn't have any milk in it. Jessica was an aspiring actor, and she had a big musical theater audition that day. She left her house early in the morning to make it on time, but she had forgotten to take her sheet music oh, no. with her, so she had to drive back. When she walked in, though, she saw her roommate lying on the floor unconscious. A nurse was standing beside her. She explained to Jessica that her roommate had been poisoned, but luckily, she'd had enough time to call an ambulance before she passed out. Jessica immediately realized something was wrong. She thanked the nurse for helping her friend and asked her if she could get her a glass of water or anything else. The nurse agreed, and Jessica hurried to the kitchen. There, she called the police, saying, there's a fake nurse in my house. She poisoned my roommate and tried to rob her. How did Jessica understand that? When she arrived at the house, there was no ambulance car in the driveway or in the street. And it's not like paramedics started using Uber. And you might have also noticed that the paramedic bag the nurse was holding was slightly open, and Jessica's roommate's jewelry was dangling out of it. Anna and Catherine are both influencers, but take a look at the latest photos they posted. Which of these ladies do you think is richer? Catherine is richer, of course. Just look at the number of likes on her photo. She has 27,907 likes. Anna, on the other hand, has 9,837, which means that Catherine has way more followers and must be earning millions. Annie managed to buy presents for everyone except her dad. She knew what everyone wanted, but her dad was kind of secretive and not the talking type. He was also not great with technology and never bought anything online. So there was no way she could sneak into her dad's computer and check the saved items in his shopping cart. But he always liked to make lists in his little notebook, 
and Annie was sure she might be able to find a wish list there. So she sneaked into her father's office one day to look for the notebook. It was nowhere to be found, but his study table had a locked drawer. Uh-oh. She looked for the key around the room but couldn't find it anywhere. That's when two different sticky notes attached to two different books inside the bookcase caught her eye. The first note was attached to a psychology book and had P5487TH written on it. The second note was attached to a detective novel and said P21320TH. Annie immediately knew what the notes meant. Can you guess what she had to do? She had to open to page 548 in the first book and find the seventh word on this page. Then, she had to open page 213 in the second book and find the twentieth word on that page. The words she found were under and desk. The girl immediately looked under the desk and found the drawer key taped to it. James was walking back to his apartment from work late at night. Suddenly, he was hit on the head and taken away. When he woke up, he found himself in a small room. He tried to escape, but the door was locked with a padlock. James tried to look for the key, but there was nothing in there but a window with strange-looking metal bars. Suddenly, he noticed something. It helped him to find the key. Do you see it too? One of the metal bars is different from the others. That one is the key. Giselle was camping in the forest during a night when the moon was full. After midnight, when she was making s'mores by a fire, she heard a loud howl. There was a werewolf in the Uh forest and it managed to find Giselle's tent because it smelled of food there. Thankfully, Giselle was not in her tent anymore when the werewolf arrived because she had already run away. Hiding behind a tree, she watched the creature eat her s'mores and tear up the tent. When the werewolf left before sunrise, the girl returned to her tent, but everything was ruined. There was no more food or water left. Her cell phone had run out of battery, so she couldn't call anyone. She started wandering through the forest and soon she came upon a witch's house. When she walked in, she saw the witch and another lady. Giselle asked the witch if she could send her home. The witch agreed to help her on one condition. She would only send Giselle home if she guessed her sister's name. If not, she would turn her into a frog. Giselle knew the answer, but how? Did you notice that the witch's sister is wearing the same necklace around her neck as the werewolf? Well, Giselle did, and there's a name written on the necklace. Abigail. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.